Is Apple gonna release a folding iPhone later this year? We are just about halfway through 2022 and Apple still has a lot of products they've got to release. We're talking new Macs, AirPods, iPads, Apple Watches, and of course, the iPhone 14. Leaks and rumors on all this stuff have been really across the board. Some of these products are looking really exciting and look like a great buy, while others might just sort of be disappointing. Let me break down Apple's master plan for the rest of 2022 and tell you about all the big announcements yet to come and just about the eight or so biggest products Apple is going to announce and launch this year. And a big thanks to Huel for sponsoring this video. So far, 2022 has been a pretty good year for Apple and Apple fans. The company is wildly successful. They are making a ton of money. And as Apple enthusiasts and fans, we just got some new major Mac upgrades. We got some new hardware. We got some pretty big software updates too. Everything has been so far so good in the world of Apple, but the company still has a ton of work to do for the next six or so months to really round out the year. I think the best has really yet to be seen. There are just a lot of wild leaks and rumors happening right now in the Apple community, and I wanna sort of do my best to put a timetable on things, to tell you what's launching, when it's launching, and try to give you some sort of timeline on what you can expect for the rest of 2022 and what Apple has in store for you and I. So, did I do that right? No, you and I. So sit back, relax, let me do my best to break down all these leaks and tell you everything you've gotta get excited about and the really awesome products launching sometime, knock on wood, before the end of the year. First up, of course, is Apple's next event happening on June 6th. This is WWDC, or Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference. This is where we get a lot of the major announcements in terms of Apple software. So we're gonna see iOS 16, some new upgrades coming to the iPad software, Apple TV, Apple Watch. This is really an event focused focused on the developer community and major software upgrades that'll launch later on this fall. And in terms of software upgrades, very little is known. We are going to get a new iOS version and iPad OS and all stuff like that, uh, but we don't know what the specifics could be. Maybe we're gonna get some minor improvements under the hood. Maybe it's more a year focusing on stability than flashy features. We don't exactly know what is coming from Apple with iOS 16, though I think it's safe to say as of right now, a major UI overhaul is probably not coming this year, so maybe you have to wait if you want that until iOS 17 in 2023. But wait a second, because all hope is not lost with WWDC. If you do want something a little bit more flashy and some new products you could actually get your hands on, that actually might be happening this year in June with a couple of different Macs that could be launching as early as just a couple of weeks from now. Now, if you are curious if the iPhone 14 or the folding iPhone could launch earlier, we could see some kind of sneak peek at new iPhone hardware, I'm gonna make a very educated guess right now. I'm gonna bet uh, all my chips here on the table, the metaphorical table here, that there is a 0.0% .0 chance that we see any new iPhone hardware at WWDC, but uh, that's okay because we could see a couple of new Macs that might just make uh, everything a-okay. There are a couple of different Mac options we could see at DubDub this year, including an all new Apple Silicon powered Mac Pro. This is supposed to be sort of a bigger upgrade from the Mac Studio. It might have a similar form factor. It's gonna be smaller than the current Mac Pro, but of course it's gonna be powered by Apple Silicon. It might have some kind of modularity built in as well. and should be an absolute powerhouse when it launches and take the whole Apple Silicon performance we know and love to an entirely new level, possibly being powered by an M2 Extreme processor that uh, is still going to be maybe a bit of ways away because the M2 has yet to officially launch. Which also leads us to two other machines that we could see at WWDC this year, and that is a new MacBook Air and a new Mac Mini. Now, we had heard a while ago that both of these computers were going to get a refreshed design. They have Apple Silicon inside, but they should get a new coat of paint on the outside, some new design choices as well, with the Mac Mini being sort of like a nice complement to the iMac with a couple of different color options, some great I.O. on the back, and the MacBook Air getting a major redesign, this very industrial redesign with colors on the outside, white accent color on the inside, Inside, you've got MagSafe here, mini LED display, and yes, of course, the notch is making its way from the MacBook Pro down to the MacBook Air. But there is a big question as when these new machines could launch because Apple could do one of two things. I guess they got three options. One is that they don't launch any new hardware at WWDC and this is all just a pipe dream, or they release these new computers with just the M1 chip and they wait until uh, the M2 comes in the fall to do a refresh maybe sometime next year, but they still release these products with the M1 inside, 
or they hold off on releasing these new Macs and wait until the M2 launches later on this fall. It doesn't seem like the M2, for whatever reason, is ready to be launched in June, so there's a chance we could see some new Macs, maybe no new Macs, or maybe a sneak peek, a preview of the new Mac Pro with a launch sometime at the end of 2022 or sometime next year in 2023. And speaking of the fall, after WWDC in June, there will most likely be no other event until September where we finally get to the launch of the long-awaited iPhone 14. We are expecting four models of the iPhone 14. We're gonna see an iPhone 14, a 14 Pro, a 14 Pro Max, and a 14 Max. This is a cheaper version of a large screen iPhone that's going to replace the mini line uh, in the iPhone 14 lineup. And most of the changes here are going to come to the iPhone 14 Pro. These will be the phones, these 14 Pro and Pro Max, these are gonna be the phones that are going to get the double hole punch system. They're gonna get a new 48 megapixel main camera. They might get some new material on the sides as well, maybe some titanium here, probably some new colors. And that's about what we know right now. They'll also, of course, get the A16 processor, but that's just reserved for the pros. The differences coming to the iPhone 14 and 14 Max might not be all that substantial because the design is gonna be very similar to the 13. It's gonna have the exact same notch. It'll probably have basically the same screen, a very similar camera system, though there might be some changes there, maybe some new colors and the same A15 processor. There are not a whole lot of iPhone upgrades expected to launch with the iPhone 14 this year. That radical redesign just is not coming, but that is what we know as of right now. Before we continue with more of Apple's products for 2022, let's take a quick break because I'm sort of getting a little hungry, which is actually the perfect time, perfect segue to talk about an amazingly delicious product made by this video's sponsor, Huel. I know I talk a lot about the behind the scenes of Apple on this channel, but let me sort of pull back the curtain on myself for just a moment and tell you guys, honestly, I've never been the best with food. And after losing about hundred pounds a few years ago, I'm more conscious now than ever before about my diet. I wanna make sure what I'm eating is healthy, but I also want it to be affordable and convenient, which is why Huel has just just been perfect for me. And one of my favorite products is Huel Black Edition, a nutritionally complete blend that is high in protein, low in carb, and packed with 27 essential vitamins and minerals with no artificial sweeteners. It's also plant-based, gluten-free, and comes in a variety of incredibly delicious flavors, including the classics like chocolate and vanilla, but also cookies and cream, cinnamon roll, coffee caramel, and many, many more. In addition to tasting really great, I also love how easy it is just to make Huel Black Edition, because usually in the morning I'm running late, trying to get into the studio to film, I don't have time to make a bad balanced, healthy breakfast, which is where this is just perfect. All it takes is a little water, two scoops of the Huel Black Edition of your choice, a little shake, and it's good to go. And again, just tastes fantastic. And if you want something even easier than that, Huel's got a variety of ready drink options that take no scooping or shaking at all. You just grab it and go. It's literally as simple as that. So if you guys wanna learn more about Huel and check it out for yourself today, hit the link right down below or head to my.huel.com slash Apple Circle, check out Huel Black Edition, check out their ready to drink offerings. They've got a variety of different options on their site with some really tasty flavors I know you guys are going to love. I love them. I know you guys are going to love them as well. So again, hit the link down below to learn more or head to my.huel.com slash Apple Circle. Now, a very popular iPhone accessory that is long overdue for an upgrade and would make great sense to uh, sort of show off with the iPhone 14 is, of course, all new AirPods Pro with AirPods Pro 2 launching sometime this fall. Now, Apple is rumored to either do a couple of weird things with these AirPods. They might drop the stem from these uh, entirely, if not substantially, to make them a design very similar to Beats Fit Pro that kind of just goes snugly right into your ear. There are rumors that Apple could add some additional health sensors into these AirPods Pro that capture data independently from uh, the Apple Watch, let's say, so you get your own health metrics just from AirPods Pro in your ears. We could hopefully see some better acoustics, better connectivity, better battery life. And there is also some speculation that Apple could either ditch Bluetooth or have some new tech that works uh, in conjunction with Bluetooth, maybe some kind of version of AirPlay that allows for higher fidelity wireless uh, audio, lossless audio being streamed from your Apple device to AirPods Pro 2. Maybe better audio quality hopefully coming to these new higher end AirPods Pro. And the other product that usually launches alongside the iPhone in the fall is of course the Apple Watch with this year being the Apple Watch Series 8. And look, I am not going to put on my tinfoil hat here, though I've done that in the past a few times, but let me just say that I'm still just not convinced that the Series 7 that we got is the one that we were originally going to get all along. Apple touted this as a major upgrade. It was a big design overhaul, but really the differences between the Series 6 and the Series 7 were very, very minor, which makes me skeptical 
and not super optimistic about what could be coming with the Series 8 in a few months. From what we know right now, the design probably will not change all that much. The screen sizes will not change. Maybe we'll get a better CPU inside, better battery life, hopefully some new health sensors like a body temperature sensor built in there. And that's what we know about the Series 8 right now, which is to say there really is not a lot we know about the new uh, Apple Watch launching this fall. Now, we've also heard from Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg that Apple could be launching a new version of the Apple Watch either called the Sport Edition or the Rugged Edition or Explore Edition. This would be a new addition to the lineup that could either go two ways. It could be really focused on those who are into outdoors. Uh, it's water, it's dust, it's shockproof. It's really meant to get sort of uh, thrown around as you do your outdoor activities. Or as some have suggested, maybe this is a higher end, more premium version of the Apple Watch, though that name doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Shout out to the Max Tech crew for catching this uh, from Mark Ehrman's spaces over on Twitter. Not exactly sure what the Explorer Edition is going to be called or what it's going to do, but a new model might be launching later this fall. And the launch of the Series 8 will most likely mean the final demise of the Series 3 that should finally get pulled from the lineup, which is great because it is a horrible buy in 2022 just because an SE is so much better. And speaking of the SE, we've also heard rumors that Apple is going to refresh that model with an Apple Watch SE 2 launching this fall as well. Now, there's also a wild card product here that should be getting an update sometime this year, probably in the fall, and that is the new iPad Pro. And rumors on this have gone from super exciting to way more realistic. So looks like right now there's not going to be a major redesign of the iPad Pro. It's probably going to stay with the same design, though it might get a glass back and maybe MagSafe support, which could be kind of cool. There will not be a mini LED 11 inch version that is only going to stay with the 12.9. And also the M2 processor should be powering this new iPad Pro. We had heard it was gonna come possibly in the fall, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be sort of tacked on to the iPhone event, or maybe Apple's gonna hold two events, one dedicated to the iPhone, Apple Watch and AirPods in September, and then maybe an October or November event for Macs and iPad. Not exactly sure how this one plays out, but we should be seeing a new iPad Pro sometime before the end of the year. And finally, last but certainly not least, the Apple Mixed Reality AR VR headset, this crazy game-changing trailblazing product that is supposed to be ultimately the end of the iPhone, when is it actually going to launch? And this has been a little confusing because we don't know. We had heard that it was going to launch sometime this year in 2022. Maybe we could still see some kind of sneak peek or reveal at WWDC, but there has been a lot of conflicting information about this. Some saying that the hardware is having some issues that it's not ready for this year. Maybe it's going to get pushed until 2023. Maybe Apple sort of teases it this year, then releases it next year. We don't exactly know how this is going to play out, but it's still fair game this year and it might make a surprise appearance at a planned Apple event, or maybe there is an unplanned Apple event that is devoted just to this new headset and the new software, and uh, that really goes in depth on how this is going to change the world like the original iPhone did back in 2007. So we really don't know right now. We could see this as soon as WWDC, but uh, maybe not something until late this year, if not early next year. And that's it, folks. That is what we know right now. So before the end of 2022, we should be getting new Macs, new iPads, Apple Watches, iPhones. Apple has got a very busy rest of the year with lots of products to release and launch and lots of work to do. So I'm gonna let the Apple employees watching this video get back to it. So get back to work. Also contact me if you have any scoops. Um, but as always, uh, the kidding aside, thank you guys as always so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts down below. What are you most looking forward to from Apple this year? Are you gonna pick up a new iPad? Are you gonna wait for the iPhone 14? Skip the iPhone 14? Are you all over AirPods Pro 2? Or are you waiting for the new MacBook Air? Let me know your thoughts, all this stuff down below. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And always, as always, I really appreciate it. I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead. I'm Robert Rosen from the Apple Circle, and I'll see you all in the next one.